Hello. In this video, I want to go over some of the main questions that we, that we will be addressing in the philosophy of language or what's sometimes known as philosophical semantics. And I also want to introduce you to some of the main concepts that you will be encountering throughout this course. So let us get started. One major assumption that we're going to be making in this course is that there are certain marks like writing on a wall, you know, scribbles. There are certain marks and certain sounds like what you're hearing right now, my utterances, uh, that are meaningful, right? While others are not. So for example, if you take the marks here, right? These marks here are meaningful. Hector works at CSUSB. This has a kind of meaning to it. Whereas if you look at the marks over here, this is gibberish, right? These, these marks here don't have any meaning. In addition to that, when I utter Hector works at Cal San Bernardino, that sound that I'm making, that isn't meaningful. But when I say something like, or utter something like, blah, 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 that sound itself is not meaningful. So we are assuming that some marks and sounds are meaningful, while others are not. Well, why is that the case? Why is it the case that some marks are meaningful and some sounds are meaningful and others are not? Well, one uh, intuitive response to this is that some marks or sounds are representations of something else. A representation is a type of object, we'll say, that stands or signifies something beyond themselves. Right? So that's a little bit abstract, but here's a more you know, concrete example. Take a sentence. Sentences are representations of a certain kind. These are entities. Uh, they are namely, they represent the semantic meanings. All right, semantic meanings are the things that sentences represent. So here we have a sentence. A sentence is a representation. What does it represent? Well, a sentence represents its meaning. So one thing that we are saying in this account is that sentences are not meanings. What we are saying here is that sentences have meanings in virtue of representing those meanings. Sometimes in the philosophy of language, the meaning of a sentence is sometimes called the content of a sentence. So the content of Hector works at Cal State San Bernardino is the following meaning, that Hector works at Cal San Bernardino. So we will be using the term semantic meaning or content interchangeably throughout this course. Two features that semantic meaning or content traditionally seem to have is that uh, the semantic meaning or the content of a sentence seems to account for what is called the cognitive significance of that sentence or that linguistic expression in general, right? So when we say Hector works at Cal San Bernardino, that sentence has a type of cognitive meaning to you, right? There's something that lights up in your head when you hear that, like you understand what it is that I'm saying when I say Hector works at Cal San Bernardino. But if I go blah, 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 nothing, you know, of that sort seems to light up in your head because that Blah, 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 that noise, or if I were to write that down, however that would look, that doesn't seem to have a cognitive significance, whereas Hector works at Cal State San Bernardino does seem to have a cognitive significance. In addition to that, uh, the semantic meaning of a sentence seems to play a role in determining the referent, or what is sometimes called the extension, of the sentence or the linguistic expression. Now, we're going to talk more about this in depth in other videos, but take, for instance, the name Hector, right? One thing that we are assuming is that some linguistic expressions like names seem to refer to things out in the world. Well, what is it that it, how is it that these names refer out in the world? Well, it seems that the semantic meaning or the content of the word Hector, whatever that turns out to be, that seems to play a role in determining that that name Hector refers to me, the person who is speaking. So with that in mind, the two main questions that are going to be, we're going to be trying to address in this class are, what is the semantic meaning associated with linguistic representation? So in other words, what are meanings? And also, what determines the semantic meaning of linguistic expression? In other words, how is it that these sentences get the type of meaning that they have? So overall, the goal of semantics in general is to construct theories or models that try to provide answers to both of these questions. So how do we know whether or not these theories or models that we are constructing in philosophy 
are correct or not. Well, there are a few ways of doing this. Uh, one main way of doing this is we look at how people already actually use language, um, or we look at apparent linguistic puzzles that arise from the way that people use language. So we use this initial data as our building blocks to create a framework that attempts to either answer those linguistic puzzles or that tries to model and capture and make uh, correct predictions about what, how we expect people to use language. So in some way, right, we uh, the relationship between, say, linguistics and philosophy of language is kind of interconnected because like linguists, uh, philosophers of language aren't just making up these theories out of thin air. We are looking out into the world and we are seeing how people already use language. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide an explanation of that phenomenon. In addition to, we're trying to answer certain what appear to be linguistic puzzles. And we'll see what I mean by linguistic puzzle when we get into the Frege discussion. But uh, a good model or a good theory of language is going to be one that is not only able to solve linguistic puzzles, but it's also going to be consistent with the way that we already expect people to use language. Now, I want to end this video by introducing some important terminology that you're going to come across uh, in this course. Now, a lot of this may not make sense right now, but I'm hoping that you can refer back to this video or these PowerPoints and you do, and then hopefully when you do come across these terms, they'll make a little bit more sense. So the first uh, term, technical term that I want to introduce you guys is a linguistic expression. So a linguistic expression is just any sound, image, or symbol that represents something else. So it could be a proper name like Hector. It could be a verb like run, right? So the name Hector seems to represent me, uh, this individual. The, the word run seems to represent the property of running and so on. So linguistic expressions are these items. And one important feature of linguistic expressions is that when philosophers of language think of linguistic expressions, we always think of them as types. So what do I mean by that? Well, take this uh, term right here, this linguistic expression here, linguistic. Now take this term right here, this linguistic expression here, linguistic, and this one. Well, here we have three different tokens of the same linguistic expression. One, two, three. While there are three words, it's really just one main type of word, linguistic. And that's what I mean by a type. There's just one type while there are three tokens. Another, an, an utterance is just uh, a spoken uh, expression of a linguistic expression, right? So right now I am talking, I'm saying, you know, I've already said uh, Hector works at Cal San Bernardino multiple times. So while I've used the same type of, of expression, Hector works at Cal San Bernardino, every single time I utter that, that is a specific event or a specific token. So utterances are always tokens. They're always individual events. Content, uh, I've already mentioned this word. So content is, if you will, a synonym for uh, semantic meaning. So when we talk about the content of a word or the content of a sentence, what we mean is what is the semantic meaning of that linguistic expression? Now, sometimes, and we'll see this when we get into Frege again, the word content is used to represent the meaning of mental states as well. So beliefs also seem to have some type of meaning to them. If I believe something, the, that the thing that I'm believing seems to be meaningful in some way. Sometimes we use the word content to also refer to that thing that I believe. Propositions. Uh, propositions are the meanings of declarative sentences. So a declarative sentence is a sentence that can either be true or false. So if I say Hector is a millionaire or Hector works at Cal San Bernardino, both of those sentences are declarative sentences because they can either be true or false. I'll let you guess which one you think is true and which one is false. The meaning of declarative sentences is always said to be a proposition. Right? And we'll talk more about propositions in, in future videos. Now, an assertion is an utterance of a prop of a sentence whose proposition you believe. All right, so here's what I mean. If I merely utter blue cheese is delicious, and then I utter Hector works at Cal State San Bernardino, 
My first utterance is not an assertion because I actually don't believe that blue cheese is delicious. But if I utter Hector works at Calcis San Bernardino, that utterance is an assertion because I actually believe the proposition that is being expressed by my utterance of the sentence Hector works at Calcis San Bernardino. So assertions are the expressions of propositions believed. Finally, the word extension is just another word for the reference of a linguistic expression. So take the name Hector. The extension or reference of Hector is just me, the individual Hector. Uh, take the verb runs. The extension of runs or the reference of runs is the set or collection of every individual that is running. Uh, so again, extensions is just another word for the reference. So not only can proper names uh, like Hector or uh, Calci San Bernardino, uh, these things have reference, but also, or extensions, I should say, but also other types of wo uh, words like running or adjectives like today and so on. Okay, and that concludes this video.